Hey everybody, how's it going? So we're back in World of Warcraft, uh, but this time's a little bit different, I'm afraid. I am pre-recording this, so this episode will be coming out probably tomorrow. And the reason for this is because, uh, a few reasons. One, it took me so long to get that last episode up. Well, I say so long. It took me an extra day, because for some reason, uh, it took me eight hours to upload it, and then it crashed at 98%. So... You're getting another episode the day after the other episode went up, so you're getting back-to-back -back episodes. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that. Uh, as well, I kind of wanted to log on at night. As you can see right now, it is 10 to 10 right now at night. And it's pretty dark in Elwyn Forest here. So let's get uh, let's get going. Let's not stand around for too long. So we'll start off where we left off before by talking to Gad Thomas and turning in the quest. Okay, so apparently one of the guards have gone missing, so we need to find one of his lost guards that, that has uh, strangely disappeared, which takes us over here. We also have to kill bears and we have to kill wolves as well, so we can do that on the way as, here we go, as you can see, wolves and bears tend to be in the forest in this area. Although I have found that... Did you hear that guys? See that's so cool. I love running around in the game and just hearing things like that in the background. Um, what I have found, as I was saying, is that the wolves are so much easier to find than the bears. Now, I'm not sure how realistic that is. Um, probably not so at all. It's just that they've decided to put more wolves spawns than bears. Although you do only need to kill five bears instead of the eight wolves. So it's the brown bears we're looking for. Although I don't think it necessarily says brown bear, does it? Forest bear, that's what it says. We need to kill the forest bears. There's one over there, but it's already been killed. Oops, and... Yikes, I guess this is the, uh, the lost soldier. There seems to be some flies around it as well, which is is never good. Although much has been stripped from this corpse, uh, st st uh, strewn nearby is a medallion with the words Footman Malachir Stone etched upon it. So unfortunately, that guy met his fate. So let's, uh, let's go over here and check the Merlock village for signs of his death. So we're trying to pin this on the Merlocks. The Merlocks, I don't know if I've said this in the well uh, let's play, but the Merlocks really remind me of Quaggans, kind of. Apart from Quaggans are really nice and Merlocks are just awful. The Quaggans are a lot cuter as well. Definitely one of my favourite sub races in in Guild Wars 2. I can't do that yet. So as you can see there we used our new ability which is Concussive Shot. Basically it dazes the target slowing the movement speed which is good to put on if you're kiting just like that. It's a handy, handy little shot to have. Right, so we're also looking for torn merlock fins from the merlocks in the village. Now I'm going to have to be careful in here because every time that I've been here before, I've pretty much died here. And I want to try and keep the deaths to a minimum as it's just downtime, which is annoying. I really like to just get the quests done, get in, get out, get the quests done. But I mean, these merlocks do respawn quite quick as it's a starting area and they need to respawn nice and fast so that people aren't waiting around all day for the merlocks. But it is kind of annoying when you get into the middle of the village and merlocks spawn on top of you. So we're just going to try and take out as many as we can so we don't get jumped. Hmm, that's the problem there. Oh, Alfred got into a little fight. That's, that's not good, Alfred. You shouldn't just be attacking things. 
Oops, wrong type of mailock bin there. Oh well, I can I guess I can sell it later on. So that guy's stuck up there. I guess he's not coming down, so that's fine. Just let's put a concussive shot on him to move to slow his movement speed. And then just start shooting him to death. I really want a bow. I mean, I, I know I've said that multiple times, but I really do enjoy bows a lot more than crossbows. And I can't wait until we get one. Oops. We've got a... Uh, Melok behind us, so we'll put a concussive shot on him until we manage to get this one down. Also, then put another concussive on him to try and keep him off. Get that one down, and then we can focus him. Don't kill Alfred. Leave Alfred alert. No, Alfred! Right, okay, let's revive Alfred. Get him, Alfred. As you can see, it, it can get very tricky, and you can get attacked by a lot of Merlocks at once. So you need to be very, very careful when you're when you're in this village. <coughs> oh, there's another footman that the Merlocks have, that have killed. Poor Rolf. But as you can see guys, the moon's there. Well, one of the moons of Azeroth. I, I believe there's lots of different moons. Because when you go to different zones, there is you can see sort of other planets in the distance. I'm not sure whether that's just been like... I know you definitely can in Outland, which I know technically isn't on Azeroth, but yeah. I hope Guild Wars 2 does something similar, where you actually go off the planet onto a completely different planet and explore that. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, obviously, they can expand what we have right now on Guild Wars 2. So they can maybe one day add in maybe Canther and Alona. Me personally, well, that's annoying. Me personally, I'm not really big on Japanese and Chinese culture. So I really, Alona to, and Canther to me doesn't seem that great. Although I did really enjoy the Mists of Pandaria zones on World of Warcraft. And they're very like heavily Chinese, sort of Japanese based. I guess they were cool, but I mean, I don't know if the full expansion was based on mainly Canther. I'm not sure how much I'd like it. I mean, because I did play Guild Wars 1, but I've really only played Prophecies all the way through. I do actually own all of the discs, so one time I may go back and play them, and I may record. Just, just a thought, but I did um, buy all of Guild Wars One after I got Guild Wars Two for some of the Hall of Monuments rewards, as I really liked the idea of having Ritlock's sword or Sahothin, Magdam Sahothin, whichever one it is. It's one of the two. Now this this quest seems to not want to drop these Merlock skills, which is weird because it's a Merlock. They all have skills. That's one thing that's annoying about what, uh, World of Warcraft is that it a lot of the time it doesn't make sense. The quests will ask you to pick up maybe like a a a, 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 a horse hoof, and you can clearly see that every single horse has four hoofs, but sometimes you get none, and it's really even more weird when you get none from a horse with four hoofs. Now I can understand if it's like a special item, but this is a torn merlock fin. If they want torn merlock fins, I can just take the merlock fins and tear them up myself. That'd be pretty easy to do. Alright, so now we're starting to get them a little bit. I have a feeling this video is going to go on for like 40 minutes for me just doing these three quests. It's crazy. I do really like the ambient sounds as well. In, um, in Guild Wars 2 as well, there's a zone. I forget which one it is. I want to say the Brisbane Wildlands or... 
Hills Bradford Hills not Hills Bradford Hills that's on here. Um I can't remember the zone name. It's one of the far south ones near Spark Fly Fen. I think it's next to Spark Fly Fen. And you can go to this area with birds and you just hear the birds like singing and making noise, it's amazing. One of my favourite places in in game just to go and chill out. So now we're looking for more wolves, more bears, as well as we have to go into this village and get James Clark's head. Not really sure what this James Clark has done. Uh, a bounty has been placed on the head of James Clark. Clark is wanted for robbery, burglary, arson, and murder. He's also suspecting the kidnapping and disappearance of the the Breckwell's prized pig princess. Hmm. Alright, so he's in this house here. Yep, James Clark. Let's, uh, let's take him out while we're here. And then go on the hunt for these bears and wolves. Well, he was easy to kill. So we actually picked up a quest from him. Now that can happen. You do often get well, I say often, sometimes you can get items from enemies that is like a scroll, and it will start a quest. <coughs> and basically, as far as I know, this is just a turning quest. Very quick, very simple, you just t you accept the quest and you turn it in pretty much at the same place as you turn in another one. And right there we picked up uh, a level, actually. We got to level 9. Which is crazy. Level nine already. So let's uh, let's try and get some of these wolves and these bears. I'm sorry for not talking there guys, but uh, what I want you to do is, if you didn't, is go back, close your eyes, listen to that music. Oh, it's so epic. Such a good soundtrack on World of Warcraft. And it's really, really awesome that when you buy the collector's edition, you get the soundtrack disc. My uh, girlfriend actually bought me the Cataclysm collector's edition. F about a year ago. <clears throat> Actually, I believe it was for my birthday in June. Or, cri no, Christmas. It was for Christmas. Um, so not a year ago yet. Like, almost, I suppose. But, um, and the soundtrack to Cataclysm is an amazing soundtrack. I've just put it in and listened to it sometimes because it's pretty awesome. I really enjoy the soundtrack for a while. Alongside Guild Wars 2, it's probably one of the my most favourite soundtracks ever. And that's uh, that's coming from a guy that loves video game music, so... Right. So, as you see, we have... We managed to get our first bear. I suppose we could turn in these quests and get a new, sh new crossbow. It does mean obviously coming back later on and turning some more in, but that's fine. Bounty on the Merlocks. Yay! We finally got some stats on that. Right, okay, so... This one. Got a crossbow with stats. Hero's Call to Westfall. I, that's level 10, I believe, that I can do... That I can start going to Westfall. Westfall is down here, and it is indeed a level 10 to 15 zone. Although it was a good idea that we picked up that crossbow, I guess, because now we can kill things a, a lot quicker, which makes these uh, these quests a lot easier. One more wolf to kill, and then we've just got to farm three more bears.
So I'm recording this video on the day that the, I think it's the just the UK kids maybe, the, the people from Britain get their GCSE results or got their GCSE results because it's 10 o'clock at night right now. So I hope if any of my viewers are from Britain and they took their GCSEs today or they got their the results today, they didn't take it today. Uh, I hope you managed to achieve the grades you really wanted and I hope you, uh, you managed to get into college or university wherever you want to go and yeah. Um, I know that I'll be returning to college in September. I'm kind of excited, I mean, uh, it's kind of one of those things though, isn't it? <clears throat> where you've been on, on holiday or vacation for that long where you just, my sleeping schedule right now is crazy. I go to sleep at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and I wake up at about 10 p.m., 11 p.m., which I know isn't that bad. It's It's been a lot worse, my sleeping pattern in the past. But it's going to be a hard wake up call when I have to wake up at 8, 8 p.m., sometimes 7 p.m. in the morning. Uh, or 7 a.m. in the morning, sorry, not not p.m., what am I thinking? Um, but yeah, I mean, I can, I guess I'm looking forward to it, meeting some new people and getting on with another year. I really enjoy the college that I go to. I'm, I, do, I do an animal management course, so I work with all different types of animals, so... It's it's really if I get if I can manage to get a job in this industry then it really it won't really be work it'll just be kind of doing something that I really enjoy doing and then if you can if you get paid for doing something that you really enjoy doing then you'd never work a day in your life really so that's something that I'm aiming for but I have backup plans if that doesn't work out and I can I can talk to you guys about that if you're interested I suppose one of them yeah I mean I guess we can leave that for now I can. I can tell you that uh, another time. So this is the Tower of Azora. This is, if you've ever seen the Make Love Not Warcraft episode of South Park, this is the Tower of Azora where Stan's dad said that they were going to, uh, going to explore the Tower of Azora together. Kind of cool. Some gnomes in here. Really not sure what the, uh, the place is about, but it's kind of cool zone. Ne uh, nevertheless. So before we turn this quest in, I suppose we can run down here and do the manhunt quest. Now I believe this is kind of a difficult-ish quest, because I think, if I'm thinking this is the correct quest, there's a few people actually inside there that you have to kill. Is this guy having trouble at all? No, this guy's fine. Yeah, he's got, see this guy's got a few heirloom gear items on, so if you see his health just doesn't drop at all. Not really sure why he's still in Elwyn Forest when he should kind of be in Westfall at level 10. It is a really nice zone though, it's probably one of my favourite zones, but that's just because it's one of the zones that I, uh, that I leveled in first. So there is a chance that a rare NPC can spawn here. He hasn't, unfortunately, but... I guess when we head up to Westbrook Garrison, I'll run up and see if Grizzled Ben Oh, Morgrin's there, because obviously these two are kind of out the way. And I suspect that people, uh, people won't have gone there, so when we run up to Westfall I'll go check those out. So yeah, this actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was. I think this time guys, 
instead of cutting off at 20 minutes, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a longer episode and put it up to 30 minutes. Although, this, I may have problems uploading it. I think what I'm going to try and do is get a program to condense the file size down because the file sizes when I try to upload them to YouTube are about a gigabyte big. My internet is terrible. It can't, it really just doesn't cope well with uploading. So what I'm hopefully going to do is find a program that can condense the file size but still leave the quality as it is, or at least 90% of the quality. Hopefully it will look 90% of the quality that it currently does. If it doesn't, if it looks terrible, then this conversation is completely useless because I won't upload it. If the video sound or the quality sounds horrible, then I, I really just don't want it on the channel. I really i really proud of myself on the videos being in 1080p and with decent sound. I try to put as good sound on things as I can because I know that the obviously the sound is a, a big part of videos. And that's something that I'm really starting to try and get into a little bit better is making these videos a little bit more entertaining. I know obviously I really appreciate the guys that are watching this. I'm getting a few of you guys commenting on every single episode and I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. But I'm, I'm really trying to sort of get my confidence up a little bit and make it so I'm a little bit more entertaining while playing. Obviously, it's, it takes a while. It takes a while to understand the... or not understand, but it takes a while to get used to the fact that you're recording and to try to be entertaining and to try to be... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's really fun. I really enjoy recording. I really enjoy editing, which is really strange. A lot of people say that that's the worst part about making the videos. I find it really relaxing. I love it. <laughs> does that make me weird? Huh? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it does. Maybe it does. Right, so we're looking for wood right now. And we should get to level 10 pretty soon here. Hopefully, anyway. Prowler. So it's weird, they're, they're sending me out to find these, like, f I'm guessing they're fallen branches because a lot of them are at the bottom of trees. But look at the size of these massive trees that they could just cut down. They could just, like, take a bit off this tree and it'd be the exact amount of wood that they're sending me out to collect. I suppose it kind of defeats uh, nature, like, maybe they don't want to cut down the trees, maybe they like the trees. Hmm. <coughs> Who would have thought that wood would be rare in a forest? Just got to look for the sparkles. I see some over there too. So we go ahead over there next. Alfred's getting strong. Which is good. He's eating his, his vegetables. Is there any more that way? I don't, I don't think there is. Oh, yep, there's some right there on bland. Okay, there's six out of eight. Is there any more that way? I doubt it because the blue box doesn't say that there is. So let's head back this way. Ah, there's some spawned right there. That's lucky. That Where did this night elf come from? Ah, I guess he's a rogue. He was sneaking around the place. I'm out of range. And here's our last bit of wood. Take this back to our little friend. So at level 20, I get my first mount. Uh, still, still a ways off yet, but... Uh, shouldn't be that long. There you go. Supervisor Raylan. There's your wood. Uh, linen scraps. Hmm. Do you know, guys? We're going to take a slow walk down to Westfall right now. Uh, actually, you know what we can do? We can show you guys flying for the first time. I believe it's for the first time. 
We'll take it down to Goldshire because we did run from Goldshire to here, so we can do this. And when this happens, we can actually just do this and just take in the scenery of the game. So I can, hold on, get rid of the UI or like that. And we can just take in the scenery and check the, the flight path out. So what I'm going to do to end this episode off, guys, is I'm going to go check see if the rare mobs are there. If they are there, then I'll kill them. If not, then I will log off at the rare mobs. Hopefully, the next time we log in, the rare mobs will be there and we can score the kill on them. That will hopefully give us enough XP to be level 10. I know it's a weird sort of way to get to level 10, but I, th I thought it'd be a little bit more exciting than leveling by turning in a, a quest. So, as you see, we've just turned up in Goldshire. These are quite cool. These are our Warlocks portals. Uh, you can zap between the two. Although, for some reason, that wouldn't... That wouldn't let me zap, which is a shame. So, let's take a little a little run over here. See if we can... See if we can't turn in... And see if we can get some of these uh, these rare mobs to drop us some delicious loot. I'm hoping for a bow. A bow would be amazing. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if it would drop me a bow. <laughs> so is this... Uh, this one may actually be in one of those houses over there. Got to stay away from the enemy mobs because actually they're only level 5. They're not that much of a danger. Yeah, one of them may be in that house there. It looks like it actually possibly could be. I accidentally popped my racial there. There we go. Where is he? Where are you, Migraine? Are you inside the house? Is that where you are? Where are you? Oh, okay, so yeah, he's inside the house. We uh, we managed to find one of them, Morgrin. Uh, let's take out some of these guys first. And then we can go in there and take out her. It is a girl, isn't it? Um, that's kind of cool, actually. I, I thought it was a guy. Seems to be a girl in PC, which is pretty cool. A girl bandit that's going to... Whoa, just like that. Just appear behind us and start taking, stick, taking our name. That can't happen. Let me try and kill this bandit off. Leave us one less thing to deal with. Morgan the Sly is down. And we reach level 10. So what did she drop us? Uh, unfortunately she dropped us a piece of mail. Although now we do get to specialise into one of our little divisions here. So we get to be a beast master, a marksman hunter or survival hunter. Now I usually go with Beast Master. So, I'm thinking, for now at least, we maybe go expo uh, survival. Just because I know that I will be going Beast Master at max level. So, let's right now just go for survival. If you guys want to see me play, I don't know, for anything else, for example, then feel free to leave that in the comments and I will definitely take a look at it and and see about playing it so we do have serpent sting right here it's a damage over time ability that we should always keep up on the uh, the enemy I can show you right now if you pop it on like that as you can see it puts up damage over time basically makes us have a whole lot more buttons to press explosive shot does uh, just a, 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 an amount of damage on an explosion I think that that guy probably has just come and probably killed off the other rare elite. Luckily though, uh, we managed to get uh, Mogrim before him and get that level to level 10. But I mean, I guess we can check anyway to see if, see if he uh, accidentally missed it. Uh, it doesn't look like he did. That's a shame. So let me right now jump up on this 
this rock right here, and this is where we'll end it off today. I know we're in kind of a weird spot to end an episode off behind Westbrook Garrison, but I, we're up to 30 minutes, guys. Now, 30 minutes is the longest episode I've done. If you'd want me to continue doing 30 minute episodes, then I could totally do that. If not, then I can go back to the 20 or the 15 ish sort of minutes. And yeah. <clears throat> so until next time, guys, bye bye, and bye from Al.